again, let's talk about gypsum board partitions this time. Now, ordinarily, in a, uh, well, let's say in an ordinary house, in a framed house where you have drywall partitions that are consist of half-inch drywall, three and a half inch studs and another half inch drywall, you usually get an STC of <coughs> no more than 30 dB. And filling the wall with insulation, you only gain about three dB, not the usual six to eight STC points that you would uh, with a decoupled partition. So um, this, is, this is important to know, a normal, normal home partition with half inch drywall or that's 12 millimeter uh, is going to have a resonance around 70, 70 hertz and so at that frequency and below sound waves will just pass right through so if you need isolation in your home or in your in your business wherever if you're located in a uh, a business area where you have a commercial building you're going to have commercial neighbors and they're possibly going to be making noises or they're they're going to want it quiet so you got to work it out to where your sound as i discussed in the first video where your sound doesn't interfere with them and they don't interfere with you you have to figure out what the lowest level of of isolation you can possibly get i mean the lowest frequency of isolation that you can possibly get uh, do, relative to your budget and space constraints. So gypsum board partitions, they tend to be less rigid than concrete blocks and that's a good thing because being a little bit limper or flexible, they have better low frequency transmission loss. So for that reason, when I do a stud wall, I, if at all possible, I'll at least make the interior partition the, in, on 24 inch uh, stud spacing. That's 61 centimeter stud spacing. This increases, or, or as, let's say, lowers the coincident dip in the frequency response, makes it go lower or, the, or in the pass band. If you look at a uh, an isolation system like a say a LCR network in electronics okay you've got your capacitor your 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 inductor and your resistor okay your your drywall partitions <coughs> are acting as resonators and they have their own frequency depending on what they're coupled to like you put a capacitor and a resistor and that can that creates a knee network and it has a pass band. If you put the capacitor to ground and the resistor in series, it passes high, uh, uh, excuse me, it passes low frequency. It passes low frequency and attenuates high frequency. You put it the other way around, it passes high frequency and, uh, and will not pass DC and attenuates low frequency. So you, you adjust that knee by adjusting the values of the, of the capacitor and resistor. Of course, you have to take into account circuit impedance and all that kind of stuff. In a wall system, you have resonances similar to your capacitor and, and your, your air gap is like your resistor. Or it could be the other way around. Your resistance is your mass and your, 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 wall, your distance is, is, the, is the spring or the capacitance, okay? So there is a calculation where you can figure that knee point. So you got the mass and you got the spring. So as I said in, the, in my previous video, the, ideally you can get down to a, a good 20 hertz, I, I think 17 hertz using three layers of gypsum board and a 10 inch airspace. Often in our builds, we'll use uh, uh, two by six lumber on the interior partition and the same on the exterior partition. And that ends up giving us what, five and a half, five and a half, there's 11 plus two, that's 13 inches of air gap. That's a lot better. We try to get it down to at least 14.1 Hertz and that covers the full audio spectrum. One thing that's in our favor when we're talking about low frequency isolation is that human hearing is not as good at low frequency 
as the as it is at say one one to three kilohertz, which we are very sensitive in that range. So, if you build a decoupled partition, the the better the more airspace that you have, of course, filled with insulation. And the mass is, is there, and it's sealed very well. Now, speaking of insulation, when you're filling a wall cavity, whether it be brick, block, cement, gypsum board, frame studs, uh, uh, wood studs, or, or metal studs, use the cheapest stuff that you can find. Lightweight thermal insulation, built, regular building insulation is the best anyway because it does not couple. And you need to fully fill the, the partition completely. Fill it full. Um, you can use rock wool. It's fine. You can fill one partition with rock wool, the other partition with rock wool, and leave a little air space. I wouldn't use rock wool and let it touch because you're going to have transmission through the rock wool often. If it's a full wall filled with rock wool and it's touching, you're going to get transmission. I don't care what they say. Uh, so, but you're also wasting a lot of money on Rockwell when it doesn't do any better job. So the lightweight stuff is the rule when you're when you're building uh, uh, wall cavities, when you're building partition walls and you're filling the cavity. Use glass wool, lightweight, good stuff. Anyway, more on the next one, and be sure to subscribe. See you soon. Cheers.